Hi everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland. My name is Jules and today I'm gonna to be giving you some really useful tips about how you can see the Northern Lights in Iceland. I've been asked this question so many times and I totally get why. People are just excited about the fact that you can see the Northern Lights here and all the beautiful pictures on Instagram or videos on YouTube. So no worries, I've got you covered in this video in terms of things you need to keep in mind, when you should come to Iceland in order to see the Northern Lights, what are the Northern Lights, <laughs> as well as uh, how to capture them. So I'll have some resources there for you so that you can get the most out of your trip and hopefully see them. I think it's just really important to talk about from the get-go that it is not guaranteed that you will see the Northern Lights. They are a natural phenomenon. It's not a flick of a switch. It can't just happen because you want it to, unfortunately. But it is really an adventure, something to be made an adventure of in order to see them. But I'm just gonna lay it all out for you here. And just a reminder to those who are still buying their Christmas gifts or holiday gifts that the All Things Iceland merch shop is open with Christmas themed things like designs from Iceland and of nature, like bags and stretch canvas, like wall art, as well as some really cute mugs of a puffin and a Santa hat and you know words written in Icelandic and in English, whether it's like Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. So for those who sign up for my newsletter, you get 10% off, so don't miss out on that. So the first thing is what are the Northern Lights? And this is a little bit of science, but it will be brief for all those who feel like whatever the word science brought up, your head's about to spin, but no worries. And so what the Northern Lights are, how they're caused, what I should say, is that when charged particles from the sun, so they're shot over towards the earth and they collide with atoms in the earth's atmosphere, there are electrons inside of atoms that then move to a higher energy state. And what's interesting is that when the electrons then come down to a lower energy state, they release something called a photon, which is light. And that light is the aurora borealis, or the northern lights. The intensity of the light, so how strong the northern lights show up, will depend on the solar activity and the speed at which these particles are coming towards the Earth. So there are times where it seems like a lot more are being sent, and then it just seems like there's hardly anything at all. And that's a part of why you can potentially see them one night and then not on the next. And then the color of the Northern Lights, because the most common color is green, but there's also the ability to see red and even violet and even kind of one that looks a little bit whitish uh, at least that's what i've seen and so with those colors the ionization of elements in the atmosphere with these particles coming and hitting all these atoms it kind of just depends on which of those is being ionized so just a little primer there in terms of how the northern lights actually happen and what they are how they're caused but going into when you can see them. So like when is the best time to come to Iceland to see them? And funny enough, it is during this season, winter time. So people have often asked me, why can't they see them in the summer? And in Iceland, the main reason is because the summer is too bright. And I'm talking about specifically June, July, parts of August, parts of May, uh, because we have 24 hour brightness, especially in June, July, and parts of August, where it basically, we don't have nighttime. We don't have dark enough skies for us to visually see if the Northern Lights are happening. It's not that the sun has stopped sending all of these particles, these charged particles, it's just that there's a lot more sun and much more brightness, longer days. Whereas in the winter time, we have shorter days and longer dark nights. So the possibility of seeing them is greater. And the season, if you will, for seeing the Northern Lights happens between October and March. That's kind of the season where it's in full swing, where people are most likely to see them. 
I have seen the Northern Lights though in late August. I have definitely seen them in September. I've seen them in November and I've seen them in, all, in October, of course. And I've also seen them in April at the very, very beginning of it. But again, like I said, there isn't a guarantee, especially as the days get longer and brighter, that you'll be able to see them. I recommend coming in the times that I mentioned, October to March. The darker months, like December and January, for sure. So darker meaning the nights are much longer during that time period you might even have some decent chances. Some other factors that will come into play as to whether you can see the Northern Lights has to do with cloud coverage. So if there's a lot of cloud coverage, it's raining, it's snowing, or there's like really a lot of brightness from the moon, you might not be able to see the Northern Lights. Any type of light pollution. So in cities like Reykjavik, even though it's not a huge city, there's a lot of electricity being used, a lot of lights on during the evening. And so that can also hinder you from potentially seeing the Northern Lights, which means that you should go to places like in the countryside or just driving a little bit outside of Reykjavik in order to see the Northern Lights. I will say though, I have been in downtown Reykjavik. I was literally coming out of a building, looked up, and there the northern lights were super strong. Now granted, super strong northern lights can possibly be seen in any place regardless if uh, the light pollution from the electricity. Now, like I mentioned, if it's summertime, it's a totally different story, but in terms of the artificial light that we create as humans, this can happen and it has. It's been super beautiful to be, for instance, at Hakkrimskirke, which is a church in downtown Reykjavik and see the northern lights like all around that. So I wouldn't count it out as being possible, but like I mentioned, we're all, we're, this video is more about like, how can you optimize your chances of seeing them and going out to a place that doesn't have light pollution, like out in the countryside. Some people stay in countryside hotels. So, and they also get a Northern Lights alarm, which means that a person is up during the night looking to see if the Northern Lights are happening. And then they come and knock on your door to let you know like, hey, they're out, come out and, see the Northern Lights. So that's actually pretty cool. Many people end up driving out to locations if they're staying as a base in Reykjavik. So you can go to Grota, which is basically in the Reykjavik metro area. It's on South Jarenes. That's a place you can go to places like Thingvetler. If you want to be out in the south, you can go to Vik. If you're going to be in the north. In Akreri, you know, it's a different set up in terms of the town, it's not as big. And so you might be able to see it over the water there or the mountains in Ausperke, different parts of Iceland, basically. It's possible to see the Northern Lights. And it is so beautiful and such a fun adventure for hunting them. And that's what, in essence, most of the tour companies call it because they want to manage your expectations that you might not find them. You might not see them that night. In terms of preparing yourself though, and you might be wondering like, okay, I want to see the Northern Lights, but how do I know what intensity will be to make it worth it to go out and check? Good question. There is a resource for that. So the Icelandic Meteorological Office, so the weather station office, has a website where, and I have the link in that the description box below, where you can check to see the intensity. And it's from one, meaning like, very low, not worth your time, to a nine, which would be spectacular. Probably, it's the most intense that you can get. I have never been here, as far as I'm aware, when it was a nine. I've actually never been here, I don't think we got past a six. But that's actually really good. A six is great, okay, just FYI. A five is great, a four is pretty good, and a three is really good too. So. A three, I've had it where uh, a rating for a three that it was not cloudy and you could see the streams of the Northern Lights going across and they can come in different shapes and they can be dancing across the sky, it can come as looking like an arc. But there's many different ways in which the Northern Lights can show up or appear. So there's kind of not just like, oh, you only see the Northern Lights if you, if you was dancing, floating across the sky. It's magical no matter what, but just know that there are many possibilities for being able to view them. And then of course, like I mentioned, the color. Timing wise, most of the time it seems that the Northern Lights come out to delight us 
late at night, <laughs> right? It's like, of course we have these long dark nights, but it still wants to come out at like one o'clock in the morning. It can happen too where it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I don't see it as often happening at like eight o'clock, which would be great because then many of us could be like, all right, we had an awesome time. We're gonna go to bed now and still get a decent amount of sleep. I've, when I've gone hunting for them, usually I've been out there an hour or so and you know something did happen not always of course but if you're going to go out and sit to look for the northern light you need to make sure that you of course have appropriate clothing and of course to help with that i have my ice and packing checklist which is in the description box below just to give you what you would need for iceland in general in winter it also has a summer list that comes with it too but since we're in the winter season, just as an FYI, that one is really helpful. And you'll need gloves and a hot beverage or something like that. Just because in my mind, if you make it into this adventure where you're going out and you have something warm to drink, you have warm clothes on, you're in the car or getting in and out of the car to kind of see what's going on and manage your expectations, it can feel at least like you're making experience out of it. That's in essence what I think is one of the most important things is to remember it's that way because even with a bus tour, it's gonna to be a similar thing. Just try to make an experience out of it. There, there's a company I think that's even doing a boat ride out uh, on, from Reykjavik, I, I think it is. And so that's one thing to keep in mind too. There's like different options. If you don't wanna drive yourself, you can get someone else to drive you and show you some spots to in order to see the Northern Lights. In addition to the Icelandic Meteorological Office's website, there's a Facebook group that I'm in, for instance, that people post in there whenever the Northern Lights are showing up where they are, so in Reykjavik or other parts of the country. I'll have a link to that as well, so you can check that out or join that group if you're coming, so you can see what other people might be witnessing and being like, oh, hey, okay, I know for sure that there's at least potentially something happening because I saw there's a three tonight in terms of intensity, you know, or there's a four or whatever. So just as a, a cool resource for you to use there too. I know many of you want to get great photos of the Northern Lights or even some time-lapse videos, which are basically just photos that have been taken. And I've gotten even this apartment on the balcony or through the window, some great time-lapse videos of the Northern Lights. And I was actually using an app for that on my phone called the Nightcap app. And I'll have a link, of course, to that. For many people though, I've heard that some of the newer iPhones, if you're using that or even some of the other phones like from Samsung or, or Google, that they do a great job of capturing the Northern Lights right when you're holding it. Because one of the major things to keep in mind when you're trying to capture the Northern Lights is keeping your phone or your camera as still as possible. And I have a link in the description box for people who want to use like a professional camera or use a camera, like a mirrorless camera, DSLR, things of this nature, because you really want to get like astoundingly awesome photos. Fair enough. But for others who just wanna use the smartphone in their pockets, there are of course ways in which you can do that. And so there will be a, a link for that as well, just an explanation wise. But some of the key things to keep in mind, whether you're using your phone or you're using a camera, is having a tripod will make a huge difference for you. Having a remote, to control turning on and off the photo or like capturing of a time lapse. Just because if you touch it and it's a mode of like trying to follow light so the shutter speed is much different than normal, it can cause it to be blurry or like mess up some aspect of it. So having a little remote does make a difference. If it's gonna be windy and you use a tripod, you might also use something to weigh your tripod down. And of course all the gear, like extra batteries and you know, anything else like that. You just have to clean your camera lens off or your, like, your phone off if you're using it in an environment where maybe it starts to snow or whatever. Oh yeah, and then lots of people use a headlamp so they can see in the dark, of course, what they're doing. But that's for the most part some essentials. And like I mentioned, those links will explain a lot more for you. So you can go off, experiment, and hopefully capture some amazing Northern Lights photos or time-lapse videos. I would love to hear in the comment section of this video, if you've been to Iceland and you've seen the Northern Lights, what was that experience like for you? Were you able to capture any of them? If you've been here and you didn't see them, do you wanna come back in order to see them? And of course, those who've never been to Iceland, is 
seeing the Northern Lights one of the things on your bucket list? So let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video to be helpful and or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. So that helps me to know like to do more content like this. Of course, I have more awesome video topics, things like how to's, or other like informational stuff about Iceland regarding the language, culture, history, and nature coming up. So make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on those videos when they drop. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.